Let's um, pick this uh, subject up with the Labour leader in the European Parliament, Richard Corbett, who is in Brussels. Um, Richard, I don't know if you've been able to hear just the, the last bit of the conversation on, on the reaction to Theresa May's um, claim that security cooperation is obviously important for both sides. But I mean, in a way, she's right. I mean, Britain has got leverage on this. Um, I mean, what would be the point of the EU rejecting uh, cooperation on security on the same terms as we have now, or pretty well on the same terms? Well, I think the difficulty lies in that it would apparently not be on the same terms. We now seem to have decided, or the government seems to have decided, that although we're leaving the EU, we still want to partake of things like the European arrest warrants, which is indeed very important. But the EU side says, fine, the EU arrest warrant, though, is not some sort of um, CIA-type rendition system. It comes together with rights and safeguards which you want to leave. You still want to leave the European Charter of Rights, which gives protections, and you still want to avoid the possibility of appeal to the European Court of Justice. But this goes together, is what the rest of the EU is saying. You can't have the rights under, of the arrest warrant without the obligations that go with it for uh, legal certainty. But the EU would lose out too, wouldn't they? I mean, without Britain's contribution in, in terms of intelligence and policing initiatives and border controls, I mean, the EU stands to lose as well. Yes, which is why the EU would be happy for us to, to remain in it, but with the safeguards that go with it. They would lose out if they accepted countries can remain in or join such a system without the safeguards that go with it, because that would undermine their legal systems, the rule of law and the protection of rights. In terms of the Brexit negotiations themselves, you would very much like to see a second uh, referendum. That's correct, isn't it? Well, uh, it's not what I think. I, I notice that more and more people are asking for that, and, and mm. I can understand that, because the Brexit we are moving towards bears no resemblance to what was promised by the Leave campaign and by Brexit ministers. I met a group the other day called Remainers Now, people who'd voted to leave but want a chance to reconsider, because they say this has uh, no resemblance to what was promised at the time. Right. You say it's not what you think. W would you be prepared, if the dial was moved in terms of public support, to back a second referendum? Well, public opinion has not done what you would have expected, which is to rally behind the result of the original referendum two years ago now. But you would have expected people to say, right, we've had a debate, we've voted, we've taken a decision, let's get on with it. You'd have expected 60 to 70 percent support for Brexit. That's clearly not happened. So and I said my question, but my question... Realising that what was, prom what was promised is not what is being delivered. Right, but my question is what would you do? I mean, personally, what do you think? Um, if we are still in a similar situation in a few months' time as we progress towards the autumn, would you, uh, as the Labour leader in the European Parliament, start to call more publicly for a vote on the deal or a second referendum? Well, that's a decision for Westminster, not for the European Parliament. But I think when that deal comes back, if it doesn't meet the tests that have been set out by Labour, for instance, and other concerns that others may have, if that deal is rejected because it's a bad deal for Britain, then Parliament has to decide what happens next. Do you go and try and renegotiate mm. something different, do you, or do you reconsider Brexit? What do you do in such circumstances? It certainly should not mean leaving without a deal, because that is legal limbo on every front, citizens' rights, trade, aircraft landing rights, everything. It would be chaos, costly, and a disaster scenario. So the choice then would have to be renegotiate for a different deal or reconsider Brexit entirely. Do you think Jeremy Corbyn can be persuaded to reconsider the party's stance uh, on a vote, another vote, but this time on the deal? Well, Labour has set out six tests, tests that any deal to be acceptable to the Labour Party would have to meet. Now, if the deal does not meet those six tests, and the way we're going at the moment, the, the way the government's taking this, it's pretty unlikely that the deal will meet those six tests. 
And if it doesn't, Labour will oppose that deal. And if the deal is rejected, then indeed Parliament should consider what happens next. All we right. Well, I I'm not going to get your view, it seems, your own personal view when it comes to this, but you did express a view on the football um, last night, Richard Corbett. Why were you supporting Belgium in last night's match and not England? <laughs> I was there with a load of England supporters cheering on the England team. This uh, allegation in uh, one of the Red Top <laughs> newspapers that I was a, a Belgian supporter comes from misreading a satirical piece that I wrote. Of course ah. I was supporting England. Uh, <laughs> Theresa May was locked up inside. I was outside with a load of England supporters at a cafe <laughs> in Place Leopold, a load of Belgian supporters as well. It was very friendly. We had a great time, but unfortunately England lost. Ah, well, thank you for clearing that up. Obviously the satire was lost, it seems, in translation, as they say. Um, Richard Corbett, thank you very much.